Hey, so doing a quick demo of Render today. Render is actually the hosting service we use for Frontwork at the moment. Um, I actually came across it on Indie Hackers, but I guess here are some of their other clients. The basic idea is you can use it for web servers, static sites, everything really, and yeah, you deploy it and you push to Git and it all works, and we'll, I'll show that to you in the demo. Um, and yeah, I guess another nice item is the pricing. I'll quickly go through the pricing right now to start off. Static sites are free, what you'd expect, sort of what you could do on Netlify or Vercel as well. Um, what I've been using is the services for and the database for $7 a month each. Um, yeah, if you were co to compare that, let's say if I was hosting on DigitalOcean, that would be about $5 a month or so. So it's not that much more. And if you're hosting databases on somewhere like DigitalOcean or anywhere else, they, they become a lot more expensive, often $20, $30, $50 a month if you're doing it on AWS or anywhere else and you want to use a managed service, which is usually a good idea. But there's actually a lot more here that we're going to see in a second. Also, it, it, we can automatically create new services and databases from a YAML file, and we can also create new ones for every pull request very easily, which is really nice. Anyway, we are gonna get started with the demo. Um, I have render open here on the side. How do I get rid of this? Anyway, um, I'm actually gonna use the project we set up a few months ago. I did a demo on some admin tools you can use. Uh, we set up a forest admin demo, and we also have a, an SJS app here. So um, yeah, it's all open source. If you wanna to go to the URL, I'll put, also post it in description later. Um, yeah, so all we've done is we connected our GitHub. We wanna deploy admin demo. I'm gonna choose a name for it. Let's call it demo branches main. Um, I'll show you the YAML file soon, but basically we have an example uh, key that we can put here as well. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a database, a web service, and it's also gonna allow pull requests. It's gonna create all these services on every pull request, which we'll see in a second. So now this is going and getting ready. I'm gonna show you my code. Let's make this a bit bigger. So taking a look now at the code, this is a render YAML file that I mentioned before, that we put at the root of the repo. And this is all I have in it. At the moment, I'm just deploying one web service, which is basically an SJS backend. And I'm also creating a database. This is all written in the code. So if you're used to Terraform or Ansible, or something like that, you might be familiar with this or AWS CloudFormation. Um, but this is quite simple if you used any of those other services. I guess Terraform is nice, but this is, I guess this is built into render and just works out the box and you can see 48 lines of code and a lot of this is just environment variables. I'm gonna go through this quickly. Previews enabled, true. This basically means it's gonna set up a new environment just like we have over here on every pull request. So a new web service and a new database. By the way, if you want, you can also create like another one called, well, called static. Um, I think it is, and then you could have a static front end over here. You've got all the info here, like a React app. That's actually what we do for front work. Um, yeah, we are deploying it with Docker. We decide the region right now. Um, Render only allows two regions, Oregon, and I think there's a region in Europe, maybe Frankfurt. The plan is how much we pay, so we're choosing to go on the $7 a month plan. Branch is main, don't get that confused with master. <laughs> yeah, um, that I recently ran into some issues where it took a while to debug and that was the issue, main versus master. Here we can see the Docker file we're using and the context, so it's actually here, it's nested. So if you wanna take a look at the Docker file in the project, it's over here. Um, and yeah, that's about that. Uh, not too much, you can read of that later. And here are some environment variables, we can set the port. Here's an example of a secret. It's gonna be, we can actually generate the value automatically so render will do that for us and when we set up the project we could also do example you no know, sync that's what you saw me set up before and also here i've chosen sync to be false i actually had to add, enter it into the ui i've also got a whole bunch of database properties so um, db host if we take a look where db host is used we can see here i'm getting it in my um in my app.module file for use with typo with uh, an sjs by default it's using localhost when I'm running locally, but in production I want it to basically run um, with another value. And you could enter that this value manually, but what you can also do is you can get it from the database. So over here we have the database which is called call out prod and you can see we get all the values from it. 
So I want the property host for the host, I want the port from the port and so on, username, password. Um, and yeah, that's basically that. If we wanted, we could easily create a new database staging, let's say, and this, well, maybe let's give it different names. But this is now a new database setup, just as simple as that. And if we went and pushed it, it would auto deploy it. And what's really cool is that all of this, so there's a web service that's set up with all these environment variables, and there's also a uh, database set up. And because we have previews en enabled, it will automatically create these new services when we, um, when we do a new deploy, uh, when we do a new pull request. So I'm gonna go here. So what's happened so far, we've set up the database and it seems like this is setting up as well. It takes a little bit of time. Okay, it looks like we're getting to the end. Let's see if this is loaded up. It seems like it's still deploying. So yeah, just taking a look again, $7 a month for the services, seven, uh, $7 for a database, and it's charged by the minute. None of the AWS nonsense where it's like impossible to calculate how much something's gonna cost you. You need to multiply everything by 730 hours and then work out how much traffic you're gonna have and lots of other costs. Uh, a bit about render as a whole while we're waiting for it to deploy, they don't have that much funding. Uh, they, they have $6.8 million. I guess the last round was in October which is nice. Um, I think long term it could be really good, um, but just be wary of this. Um, this means like stability wise, um, it's something to bear in mind. It's a bit higher risk than let's say something like AWS or DigitalOcean or Google Cloud Platform that has like got infinite amount of funding behind it basically. Um, and your services aren't gonna go down. You, I have run into times where the service has gone down for me with render, but overall it's been pretty solid. And we have continued to use it in production despite those risks. Okay, cool. And our deployment is now live. Hopefully this loads up in a second. Also, yeah, we enabled this, but I'm not sure. I think I also have to enable it here, but I'm gonna do a quick demo of a pull request. We're gonna go back to VS Code while that loads. I think the first load may take a little bit of time. So yeah, where are we? Let's just undo the changes we made here. Um, and we are gonna go and check out a new branch, uh, test PR, see what this looks like. And we're gonna go look for hello world and we're gonna replace it in the app. Instead of hello world, let's call it hello my PR. Gonna replace this everywhere. I mean, there's, yeah, just to show you what we actually did. So there's app service set before returns hello world, now it's returning hello my PR. Let's see, is it loading it? Yeah, okay, so here's the hello world. Hopefully in the PR, it will be hello my PR. Um, and then I also just updated the tests to go with it. So let's go do this. Test a PR on render. Okay, let's go and push that. And let's go and open a pull request. Let's see, create pull request, publish branch. So it's making a pull request to main. And yeah, here is a pull request. And I think in a second, we should start to see some render items happening. Let's see, so in PRs, okay. So this has popped up automatically, test a PR on render. Here we can see the URL. So this time it's pull app backend prod PR2. So this, it will take a few minutes. I'm not gonna wait for it, but this will eventually load up. Instead of saying hello world, it will say hello my PR. Um, and yeah, the, you can also check the services for this. Well, let's go to our YAML. So we actually have a second one, demo PR number two. This will be around for a day. And you can see we're both building a uh, database over here, Postgres database. And we're also building a uh, web service, which is gonna be a backend. This will take a bit of time to set up. Um, and yeah, that is about it. You can also obviously do everything through their UI. If you wanna create a cron job, private service isn't exposed to web, just your other services. If you wanna do a static site, uh, let's see another web service. If you wanna do that, you can do it all manually through here as well. My app, so on. You can choose the pricing, starter, starter plus. You can see exactly how much, uh, what the resources are for each one. Some advanced options. So all of this, basically the Docker command we saw before, the Docker path, all of this you can uh, do through their UI as well. This is a nice one as well, doing health checks. I usually have this set up as well. If you add a path like this in your Nest app, then you can it can basically check if everything's okay. 
Um, and yeah, the database as well. So if we do new database, we'll see what that looks like. This is actually so far the only support Postgres, but if you want, I think you can look through the docs. Let's take a look here. And they do have guidance on how to set up other databases here. A nice Alexa setup. I mean, yeah, they, they have guidance on a lot of things. Let's see if we want Let's see databases. Can we find uh, Mongo here? Uh, Mongo, yeah, so they've got guidance on lots of different things on the side. Um, it's not built into the platform, you'd sort of set it up yourself. Um, but yeah, there's more on that there. And that's about that. If you want, if you have questions, check out the community. Oh, another item is add ons. Create your first add on. Let's say you wanted to add logs. So we could add, let's say, log DNA, uh, which would be the logging. Apart from that, we can also check our logs over here. Here we can see it's set up. Um, environment variables we can change over here so these are our secrets that were generated i'm going to delete this project afterwards um yeah here are i guess i've never used this you can do this the shell prs um we have some metrics over here and yeah and this is where everything is happening so in summary i hope this video wasn't too long but that is a quick demo of render.com and i've really enjoyed using it like any service that sort of just allows me to have everything done um yeah infrastructure their infrastructure as code service is just really cool basically um last item let's open this pull request um, let's just see that it's actually doing what we wanted test PR on render and yeah you can see over here your render server url it's so it's in the github issue itself follow its progress here is it going to load up um, I think it will in a second. The deploy is live, I believe. There, we had an error here. The truth is, I think it is actually going to work either way. Um, but yeah, that's the end of the video. And feel to ask any questions in the comment and uh, smash that like button and follow as well. Thank you.